Hi everyone, thanks for being here today. We are so excited to share our research on the effect of knowledge of working memory performance in younger and older adults with you. My name is Emma Skelton. I'm Lydia Bloodworth. I'm Annie Puckett. I'm Emma McDermott. I'm Grace Poido. I'm Riley Jones. And I'm Allie Bartlett. Before getting into the details of our study, we must first discuss our main working memory assessment. In the current study, we use the NPAC, specifically the TUBAC, to assess working memory. Here, we have an example. Participants see each stimulus starting at the top, and they must decide if the current stimulus is the same as the stimulus to back. When beginning the task, there is, a no, there is no target to back because there are no stimuli to back from cat and dog. So you just say no target or non-target. So cat would be non-target, dog, non-target. As you're going through these, you're remembering them. So once you get to the next cat, you can see that it does match or it is the same as the first stimulus. So cat and cat would be considered a target. You keep going down and you see that the next stimulus is fox, which you look to back, dog. Not a target, so you click non-target. This requires participants to remember these items in their head, but also store the order in which they are in so that they can click target or non-target when they're given the current stimulus. We're now going to do a little in back task together. Um, so we are going to start with our right and left hands just like our participants. So on the current stimuli, if it does not match the stimulus to back, hit the table with your right hand. If the current stimulus does match the stimulus to back, hit the table. Oh, left hand. Okay, sorry. sorry. Okay, so if it does if it does match right hand. If it doesn't match left hand, sorry. Okay. We're gonna be starting with words and remember that the first two stimuli do not have a two back match. Are you ready? <laughs> Naturally, as we age, here you can see the results from Dr. Bob's 2020 NBAC meta analysis. The blue line represents the younger adults, and the red line is the older adults. Um, and as you can see, the base age difference in accuracy is going from a one back task to a two back task. Among the many theories that, um, that are about why older adults' working memories are worse, processing speed and binding were the most important to our study. So older adults process information slower, which means that it takes longer for them to encode the information, which is very important to an impact task. Binding, um, binding happens when you put two pieces of information together in your mind, like remembering where you put your phone. An impact task requires that you bind the stimulus or the content and where it is in the sequence or the context together in your mind, otherwise you will not get the correct answer. And we see a larger age difference for visual spatial working memory tasks, which use stimuli such as shapes or 
um, grids, um, and then <coughs> verbal working memory tasks, which use stimuli such as letters or numbers. This has led researchers to believe that older adults have a deficit in their visual spatial working memories. For more context, long-term memory is involved in Badley and Hitch's original model of working memory, as well as in current models. So while older adults' working memory performance is lower than younger adults, um, evidence shows that older adults have better long-term semantic memory, um, which is the same thing as knowledge, um, than younger adults. For example, older adults often have better vocabularies than younger adults. This knowledge system may impact their working memory, but this has yet to be fully studied. Um, so to examine the effect of semantic um, long-term memory or um, knowledge on the NVAC task, we um, implemented, or we used three types of stimuli um, on the two back tasks. We implemented um, two verbal conditions, concrete words and pseudo words, both of which you can see examples of here as well as a visual condition. Um, pseudo words were created by last year's research group by replacing one or two letters in a common English word. Unlike the concrete words, um, participants should not be able to use previous knowledge to assist with encoding these items, um, which should reduce their ability yeah, to duly encode these items, um, even though both are verbal and therefore can be rehearsed. Um, we can also think of concrete words as being assisted by um, knowledge. For example, if you see the word ball, many memory or images may come to mind that are connected to the specific word. Whereas if you see the pseudo word bode, you most likely have no um, previous knowledge of this letter combination, and therefore um, in back performance on the pseudo word conditions should be worse as compared to the concrete word condition. Um, we also implemented a visual condition utilizing the acne of abstract figures as seen on the bottom of the stream. Um, the, uh, like pseudo words, these figures are also unnameable and therefore should be um, more difficult to complete. Um, and one cannot clearly use knowledge on these figures. Um, so our main research question for the semester was, does knowledge aid older adults more than younger adults in the impact task? Um, we hypothesized to find the smallest age differences on the concrete word condition um, as compared to other conditions due to older adults not being able to use their knowledge to assist in encoding. Um, we also hypothesized further that the largest age differences should be found in the abstract figure condition um, because in addition to not being able to use previous knowledge, um, this also requires a visual work. This is a task that requires visual working memory. Um, now we'll elaborate more on the procedure of the current study. So for our study, um, we tested both older and younger adults. Um, the older adults range from 63 to 78 years of age um, and were recruited from the Spartanburg community, while all the younger adults were Walker College students. Um, 17 older adults and 45 younger adults were actually tested in the study. However, some were removed due to low performances um, and incomplete runs, as well as if they had ADHD. Um, so for a prior procedure, um, participants were tested in Dr. Dr. Bob's lab at Wofford, um, and they completed a two-act task on the computer. The task included um, all the three stimuli and lasted about 40 minutes long. Um, in addition, participants also took two tests, which helped measure knowledge as well as describe to us the strategies that they use to help with the NVAC. Now moving on to results. The NVAC can be looked at in terms of accuracy and response time. For the sake of time in this presentation, I'm only going to talk about accuracy, but if you're interested or curious about response time, we can cover that a little bit later. As you can see on the y-axis, accuracy is being measured. Accuracy is the proportion of correct responses to target trials, or also known as hits. Then on the x-axis, you can see our three conditions, words, pseudo-words, and abstract figures. We found a main effect of condition. Concrete words were significantly higher in terms of accuracy than pseudo-words, as well as pseudo-words being more accurately identified than abstract figures. We also found a main effect of age. Younger adults, shown here in black, had significantly higher accuracy than older adults, shown here in gold. Surprisingly, we did not find an interaction between condition and age. The gap between concrete words and pseudo words was about 6% for both younger adults and older adults. Similarly, the gap between pseudo words and abstract figures was a little bit higher at about 32%, but, get, but again, it was the same for older adults and younger adults, indicating that we saw no interaction. 
We also analyze accuracy in terms of D prime. For any of you unfamiliar with D prime, it's essentially just a more sensitive measure of accuracy. D prime scores range from negative five to positive five, with the higher scores indicating better accuracy. Despite using this more sensitive measure, D prime did yield the same results that we saw when we analyzed hits for accuracy. So as stated earlier, uh, participants reported the strategy that they, that they used seen here, um, which we categorized to see if they differ between older and younger adults. So we put strategy descriptions into three categories per condition, so for verbal and visual, and we found that for the verbal conditions, most participants used repetition, which was repeating the word over and over in their head or rehearsing it, or at well. And then for abstract figures, we found two major strategies, one of these being characterization, <coughs> uh, which we called when they looked at unique features of the figures, like points and indentions, to try to make them unique. And then association, which was trying to connect it to pictures or objects that they are familiar with, like a house or a uh, <coughs> fish. <laughs> um, okay, and then it's important to know that we did not find significant <coughs> results for the strategy, so they were the same across age groups and across um, stimuli. And strategy did not affect accuracy. So for our conclusions, we our first two supported prior research, the first of these being that <coughs> younger adults outperformed older adults across stimuli, and the second of these being that verbal stimuli were easier for participants than visual stimuli, so the accuracy was higher for words than abstract figures and then pseudo words to abstract figures. The most important finding that we found um, is that the effect, as the effect of knowledge on working memory. So we're among the first studies to find evidence that semantic knowledge does assist in working memory tasks. <coughs> um, Long-term memory is a part of working memory theory, but its influence is rarely studied. So one interpretation of this is that knowledge in concrete word conditions permits dual coding. So for example, if you get the stimulus goose like y'all saw earlier, it would prompt the participant to rehearse the word in their head or out loud and they would also potentially visualize a picture of a goose and maybe have words or associations with it as well. So it's binding in two ways. Um, therefore, knowledge causes stronger encoding of stimuli for easier recognition if repeated two words later. Pseudo words does not have the same benefit because they can be rehearsed, but you don't have the deeper knowledge to assist the performance. And then finally, contrary to our hypothesis, we did not find that older adults benefited more from the ability to use knowledge on the concrete word condition than younger adults did. Okay, so for some limitations, there are many possible reasons why our main hypothesis was not supported. So first, the older adults were highly educated. Um, most of them had a college degree and 10 out of the 13 actually had a graduate's degree. Um, so our results likely um, overestimate the abilities of the older adult population. Um, also, the timing of the stimuli for INVAC. Um, Bob's previous research, previous research research shows that the timing of the stimuli can actually alter performance. Um, and some of our participants actually told us that the timing they thought was a little too quick and that if it was a little slower that they may have been able to perform better. Um, therefore, for future research, the timing of the stimuli would be manipulated. And then lastly, um, Bob would like to add one more condition to this study. Um, so as you know, our, con our study looks at visual and verbal stimuli, um, while also controlling for how easily knowledge can be used when seeing an item. However, to complete this matrix, we need to add nameable objects. So for example, an apple, or line drawing of an apple, um, this would provide a visual condition with the ability to use prior knowledge to assist the performance in the impact. Um, while previous knowledge has shown that there is a larger age differences in visual working memory, um, it is possible that semantic knowledge could reduce this gap. Um, special thank you to our older adults who participated because it was a little difficult to find them, and thank you for listening.
take some questions. Um, I apologize if I missed this at the beginning, but what was your consideration, like who was considered a young adult versus what was considered an older adult? Um, so older adults, they range between 63 and 78 years of age, and then the younger adults were all Wofford College students, so it really could be anywhere from a freshman to a senior, but it was mainly um, younger. Yeah. Um, how did you come up with your abstract figures? Um, we got them from previous research. Um, they're called adenine figures, so we took them from the <laughs> Did you find any differences in your response times between young and older adults? <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, our older adults definitely took more time to respond. Oh. So, to, <laughs> so to give you a little background, um, each participant had about 1,500 or 2,000 milliseconds in total to respond to make every one of their decisions. So you can see that older adults took about uh, 750 milliseconds on abstract figures to respond. Um, and we also saw a main effective conditions. As you can see, abstract figures definitely took a lot longer to respond to. But our older adults were really good because in literature, usually the gap between older and younger adults was, is about uh, 1.3 to 1.5 in terms of like how much slower um, older adults are. But ours only turned out to be like 1.2. <laughs> Any other questions for this group? Well done,